Craig Lieberman, catching you on this uh, rainy Saturday. Uh, first, I'll do the obligatory plug of my book. It is called Crashing Cars. It's available on Amazon.com. It covers the whole story of how I got involved in the movie, tells stories about how we built the cars in the first two movies, and um, how everything came together, my role, a little bit about the actors, and all the behind-the-scenes stuff, the stuff that you don't read or don't actually see on the Internet. So let's jump into today's topic. Today's topic should be pretty good. I know it is one of interest to most of you. And that is the age-old question, which was faster, the Supra or the Charger? So it's important to kind of qualify that question, and here's how we're going to qualify it. We're basically talking about the Hero Charger as presented on screen versus the Supra as presented on screen. And there are distinct differences between both of the cars, as we all know. One claims to be a 526 Hemi that's supercharged on alcohol, and making about 900 horsepower. That is the claim from the engine builder. The engine builder was Chuck Taylor Racing Engines. If you go on the Chuck Taylor's Antiquated website, you'll see he does a much better at building motors than he does website. But there's a problem with that. If people have done any research at all, they know that a 526 never came in the Dodge Charger. Aha! You have to do a little more research. A, a 526 is basically a 426 that has been bored and stroked. You engine builders and race car fans know what boring and stroking means. For those of you who don't, let me walk you through it. Boring and stroking basically means increasing the engine's displacement by making the cylinders hold more volume. Boring refers to making the cylinder holes larger. Stroking means increasing the length of the stroke to increase the cylinder volume. So that's how you take a 426 and turn it into a 526. And that's what Chuck Taylor claims to have done. And there's no reason to doubt him. It's a pretty common practice. When using alcohol and a supercharger, he claims that the motor made 900 horsepower. Since Chuck is a legitimate expert in the field, we have no reason to doubt him at his word. Aha! But there's another problem. That actual motor that you saw in pictures and the static shot where Dom is in the garage with Paul, with Brian, you'll notice that it actually has a fan belt going around the superchargers. Superchargers have fan belts, right? They have a, a belt that goes around. It's the drive mechanism. But if you notice, in every single moving shot of the car, of the Dodge Charger, you'll never see the belt. That is because the superchargers on all the other cars were not there. They were fake. What we did is vacuum form molded a fake supercharger and attached it to the top of the hood with the big bug catcher air intake on top. And that's how all the other cars were built. So none of them had real superchargers. Not one of them had a real supercharger. For the Hero car, Essentially what happened is we bought the car or borrowed the car from Universal who had already had the car built. I assume a picture car a warehouse built the car, somebody like Ray Claridge or Ted Mosier or any of those other famous picture car builders who are working around Hollywood and have done so for decades. So we got the car, we got this engine from Chuck Taylor Racing Engines, we put it inside the car, we did the, the, the camera shots around the front of the car with with uh, Dom and Brian uh, as they were talking about the car's horsepower and torque and all that sort of thing. And that was it. As soon as that was done, that engine was pulled out and shipped right back to Chuck Taylor Racing Engine. So the car never ran with that engine in it. So then we are uh, forced to take a look at what would have happened if those two cars had actually raced in that configuration. Let's take a look at some of the stats to figure out which one would have won. So the Hero Charger claimed to be 900 horsepower on alcohol using that 526 Hemi. Assuming the car weighed about 3,600 pounds, assuming the car used a standard three-speed automatic transmission that was presumably, presumably built to handle the power, we do know that the car that we had had a drag race suspension and drag slicks. For those of you who don't know, drag slicks are an important component when drag racing. When you have a sticky tire, you're able to accelerate. When you're spinning the tires, you're not moving forward. You're standing still. So you have to have sticky tires. This is why drag racers use slicks or a low tread wear tire. The lower the tread wear, the stickier the tire. And that was something that the Charger had. The Supra, on the other hand, was another story. It had a stock block 2JZ, a T66 turbo, which is rated for about 700 rear wheel horsepower. This particular car in this condition of tune, this type of tune using the devices we had back then, which included things like the HKS VPC and GCC, those were really band-aid solutions, but the car would reasonably make 675 horsepower. My dyno on it was about 569 or 574 horsepower, depending on which dyno you believe. With a 150 wet shot of nitrous, you could say that the car made realistically maybe 750 in the best case scenario. 
but the car weighed 3,900 pounds and had road race suspension. It also had Yokohama 285 3019 tires. And anyone who knows anything about cars knows that a street tire is not a good drag race tire in most considerations. Certainly not a low profile 19 inch tire with a 240 tread wear. That was not an optimum setup. Yet that's the way the car was equipped in that scene. So what would have happened? If you go online, you can look up an ET calculator, a lapse time calculator. You can plug in the data and get a reasonable estimation of what your car would run. They're not 100% accurate, but they're pretty darn close. So let's take a look at those stats. Assuming the Hero Charger weighed 3,600 pounds and made 900 horsepower, its estimated ET would have been somewhere in the range of 9.22 seconds at 144 miles per hour. And that's not outlandish. That's a very reasonable expectation. We'll bump it down and say, well, maybe the guy's not a great driver, but forget all that. In an ideal scenario, the car is still a mid-nine-second car at 140 miles an hour. Let's take a look, uh, conversely, at the Supra. The Supra weighed 3,950 pounds, had the full roll cage and an audio-video system, it had heavy street seats and all that other stuff, while the Charger, of course, was stripped out. Nevertheless, it weighed 3,950. Best case scenario, it made 675 without nitrous and 800 with nitrous. Plug that into an ET calculator, you come up with 9.7 at 137 miles an hour. Case closed, super loses, end of story. That's probably not what you wanted to hear, but it gets even worse. The fact of the matter is back in that time, in the early 2000s, super tuners like Ryan Woon and other experts who had T66s on their supers were not getting anywhere near that time. They were running about 1060s at 136 miles an hour. In fact, if you do a YouTube search for Ryan Woon T66 Supra, you'll find a video of that actual run. So it just wasn't a good matchup. A car on street tires like my Supra would not really be able to run with that Charger in any scenario. Even with slicks, it would have been a tough race without proper tuning and bigger fuel system in a big way. Uh, you'd have to have you know, bigger pumps, bigger injectors, and you know, standalone system, and it'd be a closer race. When I was running the Naira van, we had people like R.R. Slaney, and they were running 980s at 140 miles an hour, but those were essentially drag cars. They had some of the weight, or most of the weight stripped out, but they were still street chassis cars. So, sorry folks, the Charger would have won that race. But there's more to the discussion. The discussion really needs to talk about what cars were actually used that day. My Supra, as I said, made about 570 horsepower, the way it sat on that, on that set on that day. The chargers that we used, we had a total of five chargers, and they all used different V8s. Some of them used 318, I think a couple had the 383s. If you take a look at the available engines for the Dodge Charger, you'll see what was available that year, and you can go online, of course, and take a look at their specs. Available V8 engines for the 69 Charger included several options. The 318 two-barrel, the 383 two-barrel, a 383 with the four-barrel, a 426 with two four-barrels, a 440 with a single four barrel, and a 440 with three two barrel carburetors. There were plenty of different options available for that car, but of course, any car that we would have used as a movie car would have not have been a souped up modified car with heads and cams and increased compression and all that. It would have been a junkyard rescue that was barely running and it just needed to get down the street. And so I believe most of those cars were 318s. Of course, those cars have since disappeared. You know, there's a, so many different copies and replicas, it's difficult to discern exactly what, exactly what car was used in what scene. I know the crashed uh, Charger has resurfaced, and that car's floating around, so who knows what engines in that now. I don't have that information. Bottom line is, that particular scene, it doesn't really matter which car won because the producers had already predetermined which car was going to win. The answer is, neither of them. Neither of them could win because Paul was the hero, and Vin was the anti-hero, so they had to be equally matched. And if you really want to split hairs and slow down the video, you'll see that the Supra appears to touch the ground first after it lands by a millisecond, and the Supra is right next, I mean, the Charger is right next to it. So who won? You could go free, frame by frame and say the Supra won by a nose, but it, I'm telling you, it doesn't really matter. Simple fact of the matter is, in real life, the Charger would have won, and it would not have been close. So hate to burst your bubble, but I hope that you find that information useful. Anyway, thanks for watching this week. I'll try to get back to you in two weeks. I'm going to Sweden for a book signing event uh, out to the Bill, Stor Bill Sports Show in Elmia, Sweden. So I'm looking forward to meeting my European friends. Hope to see you all again in a couple of weeks. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, and don't forget to buy the book. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great week.